Hello there and welcome. In this video, I will guide you through the sealed forest and the seal reforging process. I will talk about all the things that you might want to know before you're getting yourself into this and all the things that you need to do to get that seal reforging thing done. I will also go about the various difficulties and preparational things that might help you across this video. So let's get started with the biome itself. The sealed forest is different as it is a pretty much, um, well, organic and unsettling environment. Your woodcutters behave differently here. We don't generate hostility via woodcutters, we generate hostility via chopping trees. That's really nasty and that's the first thing that you have to work around. This means you will be not able to lower hostility during the storm season by just unemploying woodcutters. Not gonna happen. Therefore, orient yourself around using as little wood as possible and utilize other fuel sources as much as possible. Heck, even importing fuel from the traders might be a good idea. The good thing about all this is sea marrow is a resource you gain from those trees as well, but no sea marrow without chopping trees. So sea marrow deposits are really, really good in this biome. The other thing is that on top of the usual storm problems that you will have, you will face a, another random curse every storm season that will be invisible until you have uncovered the seal. The seal is always somewhere on the map, and to find it, you just chop open a glade, and then you will find these little pointers here. As you see, this thing pointed me in this direction, then I opened the next glade, and then I pointed into this direction, and then you have the seal. Once you have found the seal, you will find to be able to see, you will find yourself able to see what kind of plague will come next. Very, very important because some of these plagues even need you to do something in particular during the storm season. Therefore, check it out and try to find that seal ASAP. This should be really your first um, thing that you do here because without the seal you can't even win the map. As you see down here, our bar down here is locked. We're not able to win this map via reputation gain. We need to reforge the seal. The seal itself, when you encounter it, will be offering you always three quests. In return, you get to reforge one part of it. These quests are all really pretty ugly <laughs> they are all pretty difficult and you will walk around the quests of the seal mostly in your campaign in a nutshell that's pretty much all you need to know about the map but of course this is just a um, overview about the things that we have to do the seal itself is very very tricky to reforge the quests here are really nasty and when i say nasty i mean nasty just give you to give you a few ideas here open two forbidden glades in quick succession have a high resolve on these these are all high-end quests and will be enough to keep you busy entirely they will get harder the more of them you fulfill and therefore it's in my opinion, really important to get to the seal as quick as possible and start fulfilling the quests for the seal as quick as possible as well. The real nasty part here is that we're still playing against the storm. That means there's still the queen's impatience rising and we're still going to lose the game if we're not fulfilling the other goals. You will be still doing the whole same reputation game and everything will be pretty much the same in comparison to a regular map, except that you have this little sweet troublemaker down here that will constantly divert you from your things that you want to do and will spit fire and fury on you every year when you least need it. The seal map is therefore pretty much the hardest thing and you can always play it at the end of a cycle. The only thing that you need to have are enough seal fragments to reforge that thing, which basically translates to you have to win enough maps to get here to actually get to play the seal. The costs for these grow over the course of the time. I don't want to spoiler ahead about the difficulty increases all in all. It's about getting the basics here. And my personal recommendations before you go here 
are try to get yourself rain punk technology down as currently you will get rain punk quests even if you don't have any rain punk equipment available here for example i don't have rain engines unlocked yet so i really would recommend you to get yourself rain punk technology as quick as possible for the seal maps it's not a must-have but it makes things a lot easier speaking about things that make things a lot easier. You gain also access to the Beacon Tower, a special building only available on the Sealed Forest map. Here you gain a couple of extra bonuses that you get to activate at your own leisure for a couple of times for this mission. It can be as simple as just a few resource drops, it can be also just a hostility decrease for a season, all manner of different useful things. Here I had faster trade routes, which was pretty nice because one of my quests was to attain three cities with a level two trade route standing. The quests are very different, it's very random, therefore it's also very random whether or not you will win this map. In a nutshell, of course, it's simple as that. You get to win this map more often the more things you have unlocked in your citadel. Therefore, it's never a bad thing to just try it and go as far as you can. I mean, if you fail, try at least to fail guns blazing, as this is still yielding your rewards, and the worst thing that might happen is that you have to restart the cycle all over again. Another little tip for people that feel like these maps are hard for them, or if you feel like you're a little bit uh, nervous about it, you can always play this map on a little bit of a lower difficulty than you play the other maps. This is pretty nice to get yourself uh, into the whole topic. Just keep in mind that the after map rewards will be, of course, lower as well. The biome itself is a uh, parody of the Royal Woodlands, so you find a lot of copper here. You can mine out a lot of copper. That means you have a ample supply of tool material to work with. Due to the fact that there's also sea marrow available and fertile soil available, the map itself is not trying to stop you as hard as the seal is. You will really start to hate the seal after a while, as these curses can be really damnable hard to tackle. Sometimes they are ridiculously uh, low in power, sometimes they topple over your entire plan and get, your, get you down on your knees weeping. <laughs> so, the last thing that I want to say as a general hint to help you over these maps is to focus on the task ahead. That means try to rush as quick as possible to the seal and then focus on one of these three tasks and try to get it down as fast as possible. It is really important that you try to get this thing done as fast as possible as the Quests will grow succeedingly harder, and the whole other colony business is still around you. Of course, you need to fulfill orders, you need to keep your colony happy and all those things. Therefore, everything that can lower hostility is on this map particularly valuable. So all the cornerstones which heal permanent hostility decreases or resolve increases are extremely valuable as, like I said, there's almost no possibility for you to lower your hostility level easily like you would be able in all other maps. It will require a couple of playthroughs on this map to get the proper feeling for it and don't worry if this thing just gobsmacks you and uh, dunks you and just tells you that you have to try it over again. This map is made to make you fail the first time, the first few times, and if you succeed at the very first time, it might have been because of this tutorial that you've been watching, but maybe you're just natural. Who knows? Either way, what I want to get down to is that hostility decreases, like trade route things, or their, whatever comes down your alley is really good, and I also felt like in this map, the um, sacrificial mechanics, let's call it like that, are particularly valuable as this is one of your easiest accessible ways of lowering the hostility of the map 
by, for example, sacrificing some wood. Therefore, cornerstones and all other gidgets that make sacrifices more valuable or more powerful are here again quite beneficial, uh, beneficial and can be played around. Although, it is... I personally think that sacrificing should always be your last ditch effort, but I see potential to play around this differently on this map as we have ample supply of sea marrow here and you can also produce oil. For example, the temple's passive lowers hostility when you succeed at sacrificing stuff for a longer period of time. Just to give you a couple of ideas, the biggest challenge that I felt encountered with on this map is the steady increase of hostility this hostility creep making every storm consecutively harder and the worst thing about it is even while i am able to maintain this uh, creep on me there's still the seal blundering around and doing all manner of horrible things. So here next year we will lose food. Last year it destroyed nodes. The year before it killed people. The year before that it made the storm last doubly as long. So this is just a uh, factor that one that, that brings you to push forward as fast as possible. But at the same time, just push as fast as you can without falling all over. That's the other difficult part about it. I really love how these maps are designed as they are really uh, there to challenge you and to make you fall on your face flat. And to end this video, I want to repeat that one piece of advice. If you notice that these maps make you fail quite often, play them on a little bit of an easier difficulty until you get the hang of things. As I find, even with the experience I got, like a couple of something around 100-ish hours, these maps are dev devilishly hard and well-made as the randomness and the, the randomness of bad events and the randomness of difficult... Um, quests can really really make things spicy all right i hope this was helpful for you i don't want to go any deeper as this would consider spoilers or any sort of meta gaming because i really wanted to give you a good heads up a couple of tips and tricks and i hope that was a success leave me your comments down below leave a thumbs up consider subscribing and check out the description box down there there's patreon paypal and buy me a coffee and i'd be very very delighted if you'd give them a look a uh, big big thanks to all of you who support the channel i deeply appreciate i wouldn't know what to do without you folks and i hope that you will come back for another one of these videos until then have a wonderful time and see you there